Now we've seen that the fact that the Ys went in with the bridegroom and the door was shut. And when the door of salvation is shut, it is shut. It is never opened again. Therefore, those on the other side are locked out. Eternally locked out. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Us. Again, us. Because we are the man. Eh? Us. Open to us. We are not worthy of salvation. But these boys believed that they were worthy of salvation. Their arrogance overflowed. Eh? And they would come around and they would say, Well, as long as you mention the name of the Lord, confess the name of the Lord on your lips, you shall be saved. It says so in Acts. And they will argue their toss. And here they are again. Lord, Lord, open to us. Hmm? Oh, we've confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, but they're locked out. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Isn't it? Hmm? In Matthew 7, these boys arrive. And many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, Mr. Paisley, Mr. Spurgeon, Mr. Tozer, Mr. Moody, Mr. Guinness, Mr. Thinney, Mr. Billy Sunday, etc. Billy Graham, and etc. 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 Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, you lawless persons. Hmm? Lord, Lord, open to us, as though the ritual of saying, Lord, Lord, is beneficial to the soul, that could save the soul. No, it cannot. Verse 12, but he answered, unto, answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. You see, we're back to this, I know you not. Oh, some will say, well, hang on a minute, the Lord Jesus Christ knows all persons and all things, because he is the creator of all things. So what's going on here? Well, this is a parable. The foolish represent the hypocrites in religion, the mere professors of religion, the wise, the saved, the vessels, the heart, the oil, the Holy Spirit. So here, the, the, the works, of course, of the lamps, etc. Here, when the Lord says, I know you not, who is the Lord referring to it is simply this all right the voice of justification that with the lord jesus christ comes as one as moses represents the law the voice of the law the voice of jesus christ is justification and justification was only created for the church. So when justification here speaks, it's speaking on the behalf of Jesus Christ, one and the same, that I never knew you. I never was procured for you, only for every individual that cre makes up the church of Jesus Christ, the wise. You see, when the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, to seal up the salvation of his church that was already justified in eternity. Revelation 13 verse 8 tells us this. That's why Noah was saved and Enoch was saved. And Abel was saved and Adam and Eve were saved. And Solomon was saved and so on and so on and so on and so forth. 
They're all saved because Jesus Christ was their surety that in the fullness of time the payment would be made. And of course that surety was settled in eternity. Revelation 13 verse 8. And so it was that when Jesus Christ came into this world to seal the salvation of the church. All right. Came in to seal it up. Not to bring in universal salvation. That's a load of gobblers. In fact, that's heresy, isn't it? Because if you think about it all, I mean, it's wickedness. Because if salvation depended upon Calvary for every person in the world, then what happened prior to Calvary then? There was no salvation. Of course there was salvation. And the salvation that was reflected in the Old Testament is reflected in the New Testament. That is, the Old Testament, thousands upon thousands into the millions, died without salvation. And it's the same in the New Testament. And there's only a block of people in the Old Testament and a block of people in the New Testament that are saved. Who are the spiritual Israel. And when the last Israelite comes in to the salvation that is laid up for him, then it shall be seen that all Israel shall be saved in the law. No, no, no. Not in the law. In Christ. Every last one of us. And when Christ walked this earth, he fulfilled the law for every individual person who should make up the church he didn't fulfill the law as a block for a church but for each and every individual he knew their names and he knows their names he knows what they would be what they shall not be he knows the color of their eyes the color of their hair he knows everything about them minutely because he is God of very God and he propitiated each and every one to God. He propitiated the wrath of God for each and every one of them. And each and every one has a personal justification with Jesus Christ. And we all come together as one at the end of the day. So the sin that I commit has been dealt with by Jesus Christ, the very sin that somebody else wouldn't commit. But what they commit has been dealt with by Jesus Christ. It is as personal as that. Each and every one of us was personally dealt with at Calvary. Each and every one of us. It's a personal salvation to each and every one. And of course the foolish were never ever known of justification. And we conclude with verse 13. Watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Oh, isn't that one, eh? eh? So we're to be alert, to be awake, to arise. It's high time to arise out of our sleep. And how it is here that the false prophets, the hypocrites in religion, and they cry, yes, we've set this time, Christ is going to come at ten past two on September, there's such and such and such and such, and it never arrives and never arrives. And it's because they're false prophets. And there is no such thing these days as singular prophets. The enemy says there is. Oh, look at this man. He set a date and a time. Well, I'm sorry, but it says here, Boyo, that we don't know the time. We don't know when the midnight hour is, when it shall strike. Because there is no clock and there is no way of knowing. It shall come suddenly, suddenly, out of the blue, suddenly. And the end shall be. And the end completely everything burnt up and all disannulled the lot and there shall just remain a heaven and an eternal hell beneath 
the hell that now is will be swallowed up in the hell that is even deeper than the hell that is the devil's kingdom. We know neither the, the day nor the hour, so we are to remain alert at all times, so that we're not caught out, that we're not left in fear and trembling, that we don't go the way of the hypocrite. How many are going the way of the hypocrite? and embracing the hypocrites and saying, oh, well, it's safety in numbers. We've got some numbers here. You've got an elect child of God, a minister of God who understands the election of grace. And that he's standing with an Arminian and he knows he's standing with an Arminian. We're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to stand with the enemy at all. For no personal advantage. We're not supposed to do so. We cannot receive the blessing of God. If we're standing with the enemies of God. The avowed enemies. And they're not going to give in. They're not going to pick and give in. Boy oh boy. We should rather rebuke them. You know. In Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.20. Don't we read. But in a great house. There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of also, sorry, also of wood, hmm? and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, okay, that's vessels of wood and earth. If he purge himself from the Arminians, he shall be a vessel. Unto honour, sanctified meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So we can only have the blessing of God if we separate from the enemies of God. And if we don't separate from the enemies of God, we'll be sleeping and slumbering with the enemies of God because that's how they affect us, like leaving. And if we stand up against the buggers and rebuke the buggers, Tell them where to go, then we're doing the Lord's work in the Lord's service. And by it, he honours us, because then we're standing in the way of truth. We're standing as soldiers of Jesus Christ, contending for the faith in the way that we have been brought by the hand and the decrees of God himself. Now it's high time we awoke and put off the works of darkness, trimmed our lamps, got back into the first works, rebuked the enemy instead of standing hand in hand with the enemy. Tell the fellow with the dog collar to clear off or get a lead. Popery. By another door, isn't it? Well, it is all settled in heaven. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he reigns over all and is blessed forever. And it doesn't matter what we puny bits of humanity may say or think. The Lord is over all. And he is forever, and he shall suddenly return to his temple, and he shall gather us in and take us home, because he has procured a people for his own glory and the glory of God. And we shall ever be with the Lord, and this world in that day shall never be brought into mind at all. All this will be gone. All this will be forgotten. Everything and a new world entered just as we came into this world. This world will pass. The thoughts of this world will pass. The misery of this world that are contained in thoughts will pass. Everything will pass. It'll just be paradise. A new world all together. A spiritual world. A holy world. 
a pure world without trouble and vexation and all the nastiness that we face in this world. And we shall never ever see the ungodly, those who've persecuted us ever again, and they shall never come into remembrance to torment us. Well, we'll leave it at that.